Hugging Face Datasets is a community library for NLP. In this video, we'll aim to explain what it is and why it is needed. We'll do that by describing a paper released by many of the library authors as an EMNLP demo in 2021. Let's start with the motivation. The evolution of dataset paradigms has been essential in supporting progress in NLP with landmark projects like the Canadian Hansard Corpus of paired English and French used for early efforts in statistical machine translation, Penn Treebank for syntactic modelling, and universal dependencies which sought to align annotations for cross-lingual data. Modern empirical NLP, however, tends to make use of a blend of multiple datasets, often at different scales and annotation granularities for different stages of modelling. Examples include the use of large collections of internet texts like C4 for pre-training, Squad for fine-tuning, and benchmarks like Glue for evaluation. This dataset diversity brings a number of challenges. If we want to avoid, frankly, absurd levels of duplicated software engineering work, it poses the question of how we can provide NLP practitioners with a consistent interface, regardless of whether the dataset contains thousands or billions of examples, clear versioning information so that results can be directly compared, and information about dataset curation and construction that can inform dataset selection, such as by providing data sheets. The Hugging Face Datasets Library aims to meet these challenges. It has three core goals. First, usability and standardization. One line of code is all that is required to download a dataset, and all datasets use a standard tabular format with reference and versioning information. Second, efficiency, enabling a consistent interface across both small and large datasets and providing support for streaming of massive datasets. Third, community and documentation. It is a community-built library with a broad collection of contributors. Each dataset is documented with a datasheet. The library itself is released under a permissive Apache 2.0 license. Let's take a little tour of the library to see how things fit together. Datasets are loaded with a global identity, like this, for example, if we want to load bool Q. This is supported through a process of dataset retrieval and building. The library itself does not host raw data. Instead, it accesses data made available by the original dataset authors. Each dataset is supported by a builder module which takes responsibility for converting the raw data into a common dataset representation. The second feature of the library is that each dataset has an accompanying collection of metadata as well as a features schema. These are stored as attributes of the dataset object. Internally, every dataset is represented as a table with typed columns. The library supports a range of both standard and NLP types, including basic types such as int, float, string, binary blobs, dits, and lists, as well as more exotic types like named categorical labels and multidimensional arrays. The next key feature is that the library enables lazy loads via the slicing operator, which can be used as follows. In practice, this means that only the part of the dataset that is requested is loaded into memory, rather than the full dataset. This is done by building on top of Apache Arrow, a columnar database that works across languages. Arrow has several benefits, including support for memory-mapped disk caches to enable the relatively efficient use of large datasets which can't fit into memory, as well as zero-copy reads out to machine learning libraries like PyTorch and TensorFlow. The fourth key feature of the library is that it enables parallel and batched processing of data points. For example, we can apply a tokenize function with a map operator with libraries like NumPy and PyTorch. In general, the library performs limited processing at the time of initial download beyond supplying access to type data. It enables the user to perform basic operations for tasks such as shuffling and splitting the dataset, and also provides a map function for the execution of arbitrary Python functions to create in-memory tables. This can be run efficiently using batched parallel processing and smart caching of data between sessions. The bigger picture flow is as follows. 
the user requests a dataset, which is downloaded from the original host, after which the builder module is immediately executed. This gives the user access to a memory mapped type table, upon which they can apply vectorized processing with efficient caching of the resulting data. The Dataset Hub is an online tool that enables exploration of all datasets in the library. It associates to each dataset a collection of structured tags describing the tasks, licenses, and languages relevant to the data, a data card to convey technical and broader context, and a list of models that have been trained on the dataset. When it comes to choosing a dataset, the structured tags enable faceted search by providing filters such as restricting results to datasets supporting the extractive question answering task with an MIT license, for example. For using a dataset, the data card offers details on train, val, and test splits, the size of the data on disk, and text descriptions of sample fields so you can work out exactly what you want to feed into your model. The data card itself is community maintained and serves as a living document. NLP practitioners who interact with the dataset can flag issues that they discover and make them more widely known. This can include, for example, annotation artifacts, issues with dataset splits, and systematic biases that have been identified in the data. To get some sense of library engagement, in September 2022, there were 9,524 datasets listed on the hub, spanning 190 languages, 387 tasks, and at least 52 licenses. The library has been employed for a number of use cases. One case study relates to n-task benchmarks for pre-trained models. This paradigm was popularized by benchmarks like Glue and others, in which a diverse set of tasks are used to evaluate a single model. As an example use case, Eleuther AI used the datasets library to develop their LM evaluation harness, which currently supports more than 200 tasks. A second case study relates to reproducible shared tasks. NLP has a history of long-lived benchmarks, with the co-NLL shared tasks still seeing usage two decades after their introduction. As an example application, the GEM workshop for natural language generation systems used the library to simplify the process of providing an interface for datasets spanning a wide range of formats and scales in such a way that the datasets for the shared tasks could be accessed with a single line of code. A third case study focuses on a different kind of challenge. Although there has been significant progress, robustness remains a key issue for modern NLP methods. Another example application of the library is its use as part of the Robustness Gym, which provides a systematic approach to measuring NLP system robustness, making use of the library data interface. The library also offers further functionality. Some datasets are very big and cannot fit on disk. These can be processed in streaming mode, which buffers the data on the fly, while still supporting the map primitive, which is applied over streamed batches. To enable fast lookups over the data, the library supports search index construction with both FICE for efficient approximate nearest neighbors over embeddings and Elasticsearch for retrieval over documents. There is also an interface for matching metrics and datasets, although this may shortly be deprecated in favor of the Evaluate library, so probably best not to invest too much time on this. Finally, the datasets library also includes a data preview on the hub in the form of an interactive data viewer. Here is the viewer for Glue, for example. This offers a fast way to get a sense of a given dataset. The library draws inspiration from a range of prior efforts at distributing NLP datasets. The Linguistic Data Consortium has distributed and managed a range of language data for more than three decades. Onto Notes proposed a methodology for annotating multiple tasks over a single highly diverse corpus in a way that achieved relatively high inter-annotator agreement. Universal Dependencies, mentioned earlier, was a community effort to create cross-lingual consistent tree bank annotations for many languages. The datasets library differs from these organizational efforts in that it aims to provide content agnostic access to a wide range of datasets. 
tools to make it easy to retrieve language data include the seminal NLTK project, which simplified the process of downloading core NLP datasets, and the Spacey library, which continued this tradition by also providing a very simple download interface for data. This trend has continued with the inexorable rise of deep learning libraries such as TorchText and TensorFlow datasets that have gathered cloud-based datasets together in common formats. As an interesting aside, the Hugging Face datasets library actually began its life as a fork of TensorFlow datasets before diverging substantially. The library differs from prior approaches in that it aims to offer framework-independent dataset access through a general-purpose tabular API with specialized types for language. It also places significant weight on community management and documentation via the use of data cards across the hub and on covering the long tail of datasets spanning large numbers of tasks and languages. That's it. We've reached the end. See the description for notes and links to the library and other resources. Thank you for your attention.